Okay, this is pretty much the third video in a series of using GeoGebra to graph surfaces um, using spherical coordinates as the representation. Um, so we need to parameterize our surface. Spherical is a really good way to go for the sorts of things that we've been dealing with, which um, tend to have a lot of like rotational symmetry um, about a lot of things. So let's see what we can do. So I'm at geogebra.org. I'm gonna click on 3D graphing. It'll open a new page. I still have the other pages up from, uh, this is from the video on cones, which you should probably check out. Um, I have a bunch of sliders. The sliders let me change things about the cone so I can figure out what each thing is doing. Um, if you watch the video, you'll see me go through that. I have this one, this is a sphere. Um, the thing we're gonna mess with in this video is, is very similar to a sphere actually. Um, and here, we're going to play around with an ellipsoid. So the ellipsoid that we're dealing with basically looks like an M&M. Um, it's x squared, so this is the non-parametric. You can see as I type things, Jitter tries to guess what I'm doing. Y squared. Um, it does an okay job of guessing, but like I don't really get the point of it. Uh, Z squared equals, let's see if we can do it, nine. So we're gonna write parametric equations for this thing. So it looks exactly like an M&M, &M, really. That's what I think of them as. Or football sometimes, but not really. Um, okay, so we want parametric equations for this. So this is non-parametric, it's rectangular, and it's easy enough. Um, I also don't know where that equation went. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this, or maybe hide it. I'm gonna delete it, because I don't know why it's not showing it to me, and I don't like that. All right, so I did all the work of converting this, and it turns out that when you're writing that ellipsoid, uh, you end up with, basically, the, the spherical coordinates are uh, rho is equal to 3 over the square root of 1 plus 8 cosine squared of phi. So that will give you that ellipsoid. And what we want to do is figure out how to parameterize it. But to type that in for rho every time would just be incredibly annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call, I'm going to call it k. Um, you could call it anything you would really want. Um, so maybe p. I'm going to call it k, though of v, v because I use v as my parameter for phi every time, equals, so it's three over square root. You can see it's, uh, GeoGebra is gonna graph this because it, it is a thing, um, but I don't really wanna see this graph, so cosine of v, and then I have to square that. So you can see it, and press enter, you can see it, it graphed it in the xy plane, and it looks like that, and that's kinda cool. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use this function actually as a coefficient or as a row as for our equations. So I'm going to hide this by clicking this circle. And it's still there. The function still exists. I can use it. Um, but it doesn't show up because I didn't really want to see it. Okay. Let's write our equations. So we're going to use the surface command. And hopefully you've watched the other videos. If you haven't, when you type a command into GeoGebra, it pops up a couple of examples or, or any way that it can be used and tells you what to do. We want this one. So it's going to be expression, expression, expression. So X thing, Y thing, Z thing. Those will be our um, spherical coordinates. And then parameter one, start and end. Parameter two, start and end. And we're going to mess around with those a little bit. Uh, I prefer to type everything in rather than to use the template because I find the template doesn't work that great. Um, at least like I can't tab through it the way I want to. So let's see, I need to enter what x is equal to. In spherical, x is equal to rho cosine theta sine phi. So rho for me is this k of v thing. And then cosine of theta, I always use t, and then sine of phi, which is v. Okay, so it wants to create some sliders for us. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to hit comma and enter what y should be. So y is rho sine of theta sine of phi. So rho for us is k of v uh, sine of theta and then sine of v. So we're almost done. We have to tell what z is equal to. So z is kind of like the odd one out. It's going to be rho, which we're using k of v, and then cosine of phi. And our phi is v, or v is whatever. We're using v for phi. All right, we got to tell it what our parameters should be. So the first one, is t. Uh, if I want this entire ellipsoid, I need to be able to rotate all the way around the xy plane, so I'm going to go 0 to 2 pi. And uh, it's not satisfying until you put in that last value for v. So v is um, phi, which is the angle with the z-axis, and I definitely want to go from 
uh, the positive to the negative z-axis, so that would be from a zero angle to an angle of pi. Press enter, and there you go. So you can see it's exactly the same, except uh, parametric surfaces always have these the lines on them uh, to kind of show you like, uh, I don't know what those are showing, like your gradations, like the angle measures that are being dealt with here. Um, so we have our longitude and latitude, basically. Uh, so we got that. And now, obviously, we want to kind of play around with it. I wonder what happens if we zoom. Let's see. Zoom. It still fits if we zoom. So let's do that. Leave it like that. Okay. So we have uh, V and T are parameters. It's more fun if you allow those to be sliders. So I'm going to create one for T1. Create slider. The whole point of this video really is to show you that you can use these component functions within Surface, by the way. I mean, I forgot to mention that. Um, but it just cleans up the surface. Like you don't have to type this every time. So I definitely recommend that you do that. It saves you a lot of time and uh, a lot of, uh, it's a real pain in the neck to try to type that in. So let's let's go back to messing with our parameters. So uh, T, it goes up to two pi. So I'm gonna say zero, so two pi, but we would have that rounding error. So I'm gonna say 6.29 and then my step size 0.01, press enter and nothing happens because I didn't change my surface yet. So t goes from zero to, instead of two pi, I want to go from zero to t1. Press enter, and now you can see what impact theta is really having. So the bounds of theta are determining how much we're seeing. So we get this, so that's kind of fun. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for, uh, what else, V. So V1 is going to be, I'm gonna create a slider, just let it do the work. Go from zero to pi, so 3.14, I'm gonna go 3.15 with a step size of 0 0.01. Press enter, and then I have to change this if I want anything to actually happen. Uh, V1, press enter. And now I can really control how much of this I'm seeing, which is pretty cool. Um, for whatever reason, I really like looking at slices of these things. Uh, I think they're neat. It'd be fun to 3D print if we could work out how to do that, but I'm not sure how to get the surface command to 3D print, because um, there's like no thickness to it. Uh, but maybe we'll work that out at some point. So we have this. Uh, is there anything else I want to change? Uh, I'm not super sure about that eight that's in this equation. Uh, and we're basically done, so I'm just gonna mess around with this and see if anything fun happens. We'll change this to five, maybe? So let's see, let me zoom out and see what happened. Let's recenter. Whoa. Escape, get out of full screen. Um, okay, so I don't know. Oh, the home recenters it. So what did that do? Did that just change our radius to five? It kind of did. Um, seems to also have changed something on the Z axis. So not sure what that's doing. Let's make it seven. So out to seven, but also on the Z axis it changed. Um, and then there's a number in here we could change. Just things you can play around with. Uh, that's what I really like about using GeoGebra to play with these things. Uh, it gives you a sense of what's really going on. I'm gonna change it back to three so that this ends the way it started. And then maybe uh, I'll drag this here and we'll see the full thing. All right, so those are some things we can play around with. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.